I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go unto the house of the Lord. Welcome to the program. I trust it's going to be a blessing today. We are going to have some wonderful songs of inspiration and a message from the Word of God. But before we get into the singing, each week I ask you to pick up that telephone, call a friend or a neighbor and invite them to view the program. Many of you do that, and it helps me advertise this ministry. We're getting right into the singing now. Phil Cross, one of our old favorites here at Westside, is singing this wonderful, wonderful song that he wrote, When I Get Carried Away. And I think we might have some badness, so I'm asking you to have some joy and put your hands together right here. And let's maybe sing along if you know it. Here we go. I'm going to let the glory roll when the roll is called in glory. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm gonna have a time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away when I get carried away. I don't know why I become a little shy when I get around a whole lot of people. And I can't figure out why I never can shout about the love but my soul. The feelings deep inside me are the things I know and cannot show. One day will overflow. Come on now. I'm gonna let the glory roll when the road is called in glory. Yes, I am. I'm gonna get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm gonna have a time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm gonna get carried away. When I get carried away I'll pass the clouds and shout so loud It may sound like thunder My tear-filled eyes may fill the skies Till it looks like rain As I leave this world past the gates of pearl And stand before my Savior I'll let my soul let the glory roll And from the roll he calls my name Here we go now Everybody. I'm going to let the glory roll when the roll is called in glory. I'm going to get beside of myself when I get beside the king that day. I'm going to have the time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm going to get carried away when I get carried away. I'm going to let the glory roll when the roll is called in glory. I trust that you have enjoyed the song by Phil. We are going to have another song in just a minute. But right now, I want to take this opportunity to invite you. If you don't have a church home to visit with us here at Westside Baptist Church, you may be new in this area. Not know exactly where we are located, so allow me to give you some very brief directions. If you will simply drive downtown, driving south on Jackson Street, you will pass the old courthouse, drive to the bottom of the hill. Now, at the bottom of the hill, the street changes in name only to LaGrange Street. Drive down LaGrange Street, pass the Newman High School, and drive one and a half miles further. Look for the church on the left-hand side of the road. In fact, just look for the big white cross on the church sign, 762. Smoky Road. Now, our services begin on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock with Sunday school, 11 o'clock morning worship, 6 p.m. the evening service, and on Wednesday at 6.30, we have the children's ministries, 7 o'clock the teen ministries, and the adult Bible study and prayer service. Come out and visit with us. We would be so thrilled, so honored 
to have you do that. Now we're getting right back into the singing, a wonderful song by Miss Cheryl Lomax. The title of her song is Ride Out Your Storm. song before the message. Miss Karen Moore, a concert pianist, is playing praise medley.
I trust that you have enjoyed the singing today. Now let's take a look in the book. If you have your Bible, I really suggest you take a pencil and a piece of paper, jot these references down. I will be using many. That way you can study them in detail at a later time. I want to talk to you today about some things I've not changed my mind about. You will agree with me that we are living in a changing world. The customs are changing. Look around us. Culture is changing. Church members are changing. But today I want to talk to you about some things that I will never change. I will stand on, and I trust that you will stand on the same things as well. First of all, let's address the Word of God. It's inspired, verbally inspired. It's not only inspired, but it's inerrant. It does not have error in it. It's infallible, God's holy Word. God breathes, if you please. It's a book of wonder. Oh, listen. A book of worship, a book of warfare. <laughs> listen, we're in a spiritual battle today. And we need the Word of God to reinforce us, to strengthen us, and help us as we walk this walk of faith. It's a map for direction. It tells us where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. It's a manual for discretion. Oh, I want to tell you, and it's a mirror for our discipline to show us when we err and how to correct it. Read it and be wise. Read it and be wise. Believe it and be saved, my dear friend. Practice it and be holy. Obey it and be blessed. Let's look at the way to God. John records in chapter 14, verse 6, these words of Jesus. Jesus saith unto him... I am the way. Now, today, we are being taught that there are many different ways to eternal life. But Jesus Christ declares that He is the way. He's the only way. He's the only door. He's the truth. Oh, let me tell you, He is the truth. There's many deceptions today being taught in the name of religion. But Jesus Christ is the truth. He's the life, eternal life. There's no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved, save the name of Jesus Christ. Him and Him only. No man cometh to the Father, He says, but by me. You believe it? It's sure, it's real today. Realize that if you're not saved, you're a sinner, lost. Oh, listen. In Romans chapter 3, and turn there if you want to, in verse number 23, it says, All have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. You see, I don't care who you are, my dear friend. You were born in sin because of the initial sin of Adam and Eve. My dear friend, I want to tell you, we were born in sin. But you see, there is repentance today toward God. Because you see, God did not want us to remain in that condition he provided a way. In the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 21, testifying both to the Jews. You see, the gospel was preached first to the Jews and says then the Greeks, that's the Gentiles, repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the hope today when we placed our trust, when we placed our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me now. You must recognize Jesus died for your sins in order to be saved. Paul, or rather Luke, in the first, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. The Scriptures predicted that He would come, that He would be the perpetuation for our sins. Not for my sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Listen, recognize that today. If you're not saved, Jesus Christ came to die for you. You were so important in the eyes of Holy God that He sent Holy Son to be the sin bearer Pay the sin debt for your sins and also for my sins. Oh, listen today. 
simply says receive Jesus Christ by faith, plus nothing, minus nothing. Works doesn't get you to heaven. In the book of Acts, turn there to chapter 16, verse 31. Acts 16, verse 31. And find these words. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved at thy house. Household salvation, but you see each person in the house must also believe just like you believed in order to be saved. Jesus Christ died for all, but all must come by the way of the cross. Then let's look at the worship of God today. Worship is scriptural. John in 4, 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As we come together, we realize that we must worship God in spirit and truth, the truth of the word of God. Now, we also learn that all are saved by separation. In Second Chronicles, or Corinthians, rather, 6, 17, listen now very carefully to these words. Wherefore, come ye out from among them, and be ye separate saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. Oh, listen, separated. That does not mean that we can move out and isolate ourselves from those around us, the community and so forth. But you see, it means do not participate in those worldly things. Don't walk the worldly walk any longer because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you are to live a clean separated life, holy unto God. Let's look at the will of God. It is the will of God that all sinners be saved, my dear friend. Whosoever will, as Timothy is told in, by the Apostle Paul in chapter 2, verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth? It's not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to saving knowledge. All should come and become part of the great family of God. I trust you are today. You who are viewing might not be. Some of you might not be, but you can be before this broadcast is over. Hey, listen. My God is waiting to hear the call from those who want to be part of his family and ask them to him to come into their heart and be the Lord of their life, birth them into the family. But I want to tell you, all saved will be separated. In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, wherefore come out from among them. Doesn't mean that you, have not, that you cannot have fellowship with lost people. You cannot isolate yourself from people who are not saved. They're all around us. And besides, we should be living a Christ-like life in their presence so that they could see the difference and have a desire to know the same God that you're saved by. It says, Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. In other words, <laughs> stay away from sin. Don't willfully sin. Come out from among those that you used to associate with. Be separated from those things that hindered your walk as a Christian. Just be Put God first in your life, really, and be separated from all those things. You see, all separated people are spirit-filled. Ephesians 5, 18 says, And be not drunk with wine, worry in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Oh. Now let's talk to you for a few minutes about the wrath of God. God deals with the saints that rebel. Saved, folks. I'm going to talk to you who are saved today. Listen, God expects us to live a clean Christian walk. You see, if he sees errors in our life, things that are not so, there is a cleansing. In John chapter 15, verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You are cleaned by the study of the word of God Applying it to your life. But you see, there's also chastisement. We don't like that, do we? But Hebrews 12, verse 8 says, 
But if ye be without chastisement, listen now very carefully. Wherefore, all are partakers, ye are illegitimate and not sons. In other words, you may be pretending to be a Christian. You may be trying to act like a Christian. But if you are still in the world and you don't see chastisement on your life, it's evident you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Scriptures. That's not Melvin Payne. That's the Scriptures today. You see, there's going to be castaways. Oh, you don't want to be part of that. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, But I kept under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. These are the words of Paul. It was so important that he walked a clean Christian walk, that he would not be cast aside even though he was saved. Sometimes, many times, Christians err in the way and they stray and their testimony is ruined. They're cast aside. I want to tell you, once you're saved, you're always saved. But it behooves all of us to live a clean, dedicated life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's talk about being carried home. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, For this cause many a week, listen very carefully now, talking about those who willfully sin, though they have been saved. For this cause many a week, weak Christians, if you please, sickly among you, and many sleep. In other words, God carries some home because they will not straighten up their life. And there's such a bad testimony around those others who they come in contact with that it's better that God just carry them on home than to let them be a continued hindrance. But listen, God deals with a sinner who refuse him. In Revelation 20, listen very carefully, now verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. And in Revelation 21, verse 8, But the fearful and unbelieving, the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire which burneth with fire and brimstone. It is the second death. Those who refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friend. Psalms 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations, listen to this, all nations that forget God. America stands in danger today. But finally, let's look at the wisdom of God. Peter records in his second epistle, chapter 2, verse 9, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Thank God for that. And to reserve unto judgment the day of judgment to be punished. Oh, listen. We see the God preserves the godly. God reserves the ungodly. Today, which classification do you fit in? God preserves the godly. Those who are saved. He reserves the ungodly to be doomed for all eternity. I trust you know this Jesus Christ that I've spoken about today. If you don't know him, he wants a personal relationship with you. Get on your knees and ask him to come into your heart. To change you and make you part of his family. You don't want to go to that other place. You want to spend eternity in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know if you do that, he'll save you. He'll birth you into the family, and you'll be part of the body of ch the church, the living church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until this same time next week, this is Brother Melvin Payne, the pastor of Westside Baptist Church, saying goodbye, God bless you, and go with God. <laughs>